Welcome to Chapter 2, Part 2. In this chapter, this section, we are going to add in um, some information into our body tag. We're going to deal with Google Fonts, and we're going to learn how to link um, an image to our browser tab. So the first thing we need to do is actually go get our folder in our Chapter 2 web design. So we're going to go and do flag E. We're going to go and find our flash drive and then we're looking for our web design folder and we want chapter 2. So now we're here we want to double click on my first web page we're going to select index.html right click and then we're going to click on edit with notepad plus plus. This is where we left off last, last in chapter 2 part a or part one. We added in our metadata tags and then we added in a comment. So the first thing we're going to do is delete that comment, comment because we want to add some text. So let's go ahead and put in our paragraph tag. It will be a little p and then it should automatically put in your closing p. Now we need to go get some text. Now web designers, when you're not ready to type in text, Web designers use a website called Lipsum, and what this does is ha it has fake text um, that you can use, and we're going to click on Lorem Inslum, that you can use to insert in your websites until you're ready to actually type in text. That way it helps you with how your website is going to look. So we want to make sure paragraphs are selected, and we're going to go to Generate, and we're going to grab a couple of paragraphs. So I'm going to select the first two. I'm going to control C to copy. And then I'm going to go back to my website and I'm going to make sure my cursor is between my opening and closing paragraph drag. Then I'm going to do control V and put in my paragraphs. Now let's go save this and let's run it. And as we launch it in Chrome, slow. We're going to see that we only have one paragraph. This means we have to go back and find out what's wrong. So we have to kind of debug this. So if we look at our first paragraph, line 23, this is our whole paragraph. Notice that when we go to the end there is no closing paragraph. So let's put in a closing paragraph tag. We're going to save that. Let's see if that fixed the problem. It looks like it did, all right, because we have two paragraphs, but we need to check a little bit further. If I scroll down, notice that line 25 only has a closing paragraph. So I need to add an opening one for that. I'm going to hit the tab key a couple of times because I want to line that up. And since I already have a closing paragraph tag down here, I can just go ahead and delete one that is automatically put in. I'm going to save it and though it's not going to make any difference at this point as you start putting information in if you don't have your paragraphs opening and closings in there it will make a difference. All right so we want to make sure that we have that. I'm going to close out of this because we don't need it anymore. All right so now we have our paragraphs in there. So the next thing we want to do is we want to set up our body tag. Now we've already used our style tag so now we're going to add a little bit more to this. We have our first property value um, our first property value here, our second property value. So now let's put our cursor at the end of the semicolon. We're going to hit the space bar and we want to add in a font family. All right. Now we're not quite sure what font family we want to use but we know we want to use sans serif, one that doesn't have any feet. All right, so we're going to go in and open up a Word document and this is one of the fastest ways that you can look for fonts. So I'm going to click on that drop down and I'm going to look for something that has no feet. And as you scroll down you are you're, you're free to take whichever ones you want. I am going to select Arial. It doesn't have any feet. If I go and select the text in the little box, the search box and do control C. I can go back 
and then do control V and put in my font family. Then I want to do comma and I always add sans serif after it since this is sans serif text. Remember we want sans serif to apply to the, all of the text on the website. All right, so we're going to save that. We're going to go run it. And now we have sans, uh, we have Arial in our website. All right, we're going to go back and let's now add the font size. So we're going to type on font size in here. And let's do 1.2 EM. Standard is usually one, but if you want a little bit, I'm going to do a little bit bigger so you can see it. So we're going to save this and then we're going to run it. And you can see the fonts a little bit bigger. If I go here and do a comparison between my last one and this one, the fonts larger. And I want to make sure I put a semicolon at the end of that. All right, now the next thing we want to do is add our link in for our icon on our browser tab. So we're going to do link and rel equals, and this is a shortcut that we want. All right, and that's where we're going to stop for right now because we have to go get an image. So let's go to our website and I'm going to open up a new tab in Chrome and I'm going to go to the right side and click on images. And I want the image, since this is my first web page, I think I want the letter number one. So I'm going to type in one. Remember, I got to be careful about just taking anything on here. I have to have Creative Commons. So I'm going to go to Tools and then Usable Rights. And I'm going to use Labeled for Reuse with Modifications. And then I can look around for the actual number that I want. I think I'm going to take, mm -hmm -hmm, I'm going to take, um, maybe this one right here. I'm going to right click on it. I'm going to copy the image and then I'm going to look and open up my paint desktop app because I want to resize this image so that it's around 90 pixels. So when I get when paint opens up I'm going to do control V to open that up and then I'm going to go to resize, select pixels, then I want to change this to about 90. Then OK. Remember I want to get rid of all of this extra white so I'm going to go here and get rid of that. And there'll be a little bit of white in there but that's better, that's OK. Um, and then I'm going to go to file, save as, and I'm going to go and find my images folder so I'm going to make sure, remember we always say make sure you're in the right folder. So I'm going to go find my flash drive. And here's my web design. I'm going to go into chapter two, go into my first web page, click on images, and I'm going to type in, let's do this icon because then I know it's for my browser tab. Let's save it. Right now let's go back to our website and now we can actually finish the rest. We're going to type in our hyper reference and then remember we have to go to the open button. Make sure you're in the correct folder. We're going to click on images and if you don't want to type that you want to make sure you don't have any errors just right click and go to properties and copy it. Then paste it in followed by a slash. And then now we need to go to the open button again go into images and actually get our file name. Now I don't need width and height on this because I'm just linking to it. So I'm going to go back, paste that in, and then close it out. Oops, didn't want to do that. Let's turn it away. There we go. I'm going to save this and let's run it. Let's make sure everything's good. I'm going to run it. If you notice up there now, I have a little number one against uh, next to my, my first web page. So I've got my little icon up there. All right, the next thing we want to do is learn how to handle Google Fonts. Google Fonts are great 
if you have special fonts that you want to use that you don't want to have to worry about the default settings on computers. Google Fonts, since it's in the cloud, the computer will access it through Google Cloud and so it doesn't reach the, it doesn't go to the default drive on the actual computer, which is good. So we're going to hit, we're going to put our cursor on line 19. This goes in the metadata tags. Hit enter twice. And then now we're going to go actually search for our Google Fonts. And it's real easy to find. If you type in Google Fonts, it'll pull up very quickly. Here's Google Fonts. I'm just going to select it. And when it opens up, I'm just going to have to look for the fonts that I want to use. It's kind of slow right now, but it's a really good font, uh, good fonts to have if you want some unique fonts that um, are not on normal computers. Now on the right side where it says categories, I am just going to want to look for sans serifs. So if I click off, because I'm going for the body, I can turn all these off and it eliminates all that other, um, the serifs. So now I can go scroll through and look for the sans serif that I want to use on my website. I think I am going to use the spectacular, this PT Sans. To access this, I just click on this little plus sign where it says select this font. Then at the bottom, you're going to see that a family selected opens up. I'm going to click on it. Um, I'm going to make sure all I have up there is my PT Sans, all right, because it does remember. I'm going to have to do two things here. I'm going to have to first get my link to Google fonts. So I'm going to triple click on the first link and I'm going to control C it to copy it. So I need this in my website so that the browser or the search engine knows to go search for it. So on line 21 I'm going to paste that link in and that's good. Then I've got to go back a second time because now I have to tell the browser where to actually apply that font. So I'm going to triple click on the specify in CSS. I'm going to get that link. I'm going to exit out of this. I'm going to go back to here. And then where I have my font family for Arial, I'm actually going to delete that because I, I don't want both of them. And I'm going to paste in what I just got. And I'm going to make sure all of this is on the same line. And now that the, the link here is linking to Google Fonts, it's looking for the PT Sans. And then it's because I put it in the body tag, it's going to apply it to the whole document. So let's go ahead and save this and run it. I look at my website now. I have a different type of font. So I have this, the PT Sans here. Now, I'm not quite done because I need now to add a heading in here. So we're going to hit the Enter key twice. We're going to put our cursor, let's do this, we're going to put our cursor on line at the end of 25, hit our Enter key twice. And then we're going to Tab and we're going to put a heading one tag in here. And we're going to type in Hello World. This is a standard first web page that people create. So there's my hello world and I'm going to save it and if I run it it's going to apply the sans serif. Notice there's no feet really. It's going to apply this to this document. So we want to change that. All right we want this to read differently. So let's put our cursor on line 21. Hit the enter key a couple times and we're going to go to back to sans serif and we're going to look for our Google fonts and this time we're going to select serif and deselect sans serif. So all we get is serif fonts. And now we're going to look for a serif font that we might like to use. And again you can choose whichever one you want. There are nice little examples here and you can scroll down. There's a lot of them that you can use. Actually, I kind of like the one up here, this one here. So I'm going to go and click on the plus sign for bitter and then go down here so it opens up. And remember, I have to get the link because I have to link to my Google font website so 
um, that it makes that connection. I'm going to paste it in between the head tag. And so now I have, um, but I want, there's one thing I want you to pay attention to. Notice it says bitter and then there is a line and then PT Sans. Because I didn't clear my font, we're going to do control Z. Because I didn't clear my font, I got both of them. So I'm going to go up here and where it says bitter and PTS, I want to clear it all. All right. So I don't get both of them. Then if I hit on my plus sign, and click on my family selected. Now notice I only have one selection. So I'm going to triple click on that and copy it, control C, go back to my website, paste it in. And now if I look at the link, notice I only have the one. Now I'm not quite done because now I have to tell the web page or the browser where to actually apply that link. So I'm going to go back up here where it says specify in CSS. I'm going to triple click on that and copy it, control C, go back into my heading tag, put my cursor after the H1, and then I'm going to do style equals and then paste in my font family and close out with my quotation mark. Let's put all that on the same line. So remember this is the value so I have to make sure I put in my property. So then I'm going to save this and let's see if we can tell a distinction between the two. Notice that my hello world now looks different than the rest of the page. The last thing we're going to do is we're going to add some, oh and the other thing I should say notice that because I put the font family right inside the h1 tag it overrides the information that's in the body tag just so you know that so let's add some color here um, I think that's yellow so let's go ahead and save it we'll see what kind of color we're gonna get I got a green so now it's the, the heading one is different right than the text on the page so now what we've done is we went through and we added our link for our shortcut for our icon. We added two links to Google Fonts. And again, I encourage you to use them. I think you have more variety of fonts and it's kind of nice because then you don't have to worry about how it's going to open on a computer. And then remember we added in our font family here in our body tag and we also added it using the style tag in our H1 and we added some color. We also went to Lipsum to get our text and we added our paragraphs in. So you have just finished the class activity. Great job.